So thank you all. It's a great honor to be here. And um, it, uh, it was really heartening to see uh, so many scholars, scholars coming together for Asian studies and cultural studies. And um, so I sort of belong to both, particularly proud to be here. And um, well, the, I like very much Bandon's uh, uh, opening speech about the idea of human rights. But I wouldn't talk directly or addressing the word um, in my presentation. But um, as you will find out, I, I think by the end, you would you will see how the implications are there. I mean, it's about rights, about human, about um, citizenship, about I mean, the basic uh, conditions that we should live as human beings. So uh, my topic here is from Minjong to Jujong. Okay. I want to introduce uh, my speech with this song.
maybe by the end, you all can sing it, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, I'm, I'm working on this idea of the minjong, uh, the multitude, the people. I mean, there is different translation. Uh, and in, in Korean, it's spelled differently. Uh, I click one more. Okay. And I, I want to refer to it particularly because I know that Korea has a very strong minjong movement uh, in the 70s. So it's become sort of a, a part of the Asian traditions that I want to refer to. It's a historical movement for democracy by the people against the dictatorial rule of Park Chung-hee and Chun Do-hun in South Korea from the late 70s to the, to the 80s. So the Korean words correspond to the Chinese characters of Min Jung, which combine the word of Min and the general population meaning, and Jung, simply many or what is being popularized now. Uh, the multitude. So the term is supposed to mean the majority of the people who are not the state or not part of the establishment who take share of the ruling power. There are many resources in Chinese tradition considering the weights of the people in good governance. This starts with the call to emperor to the emperor to exercise respect for his people as the foundation of imperial rule. Uh, that is the ancient time, and extend to the modern time where Sun Yat-sen uh, who integrates the modern idea of democracy into Kuomintang's three principles, the ruling party of Taiwan right now. And that is government of the people, by the people, for the people. When uh, Sun Yat-sen became the provincial, provisional president. Uh, ironically, I mean the, the word people, um, is now institution, institutionalized into the name of um, the new nation, the People's Republic of China. So um, the distinction between People's Republic of China and the Republic of China, Taiwan and China, is the absence of the people in one of them. That's unfortunate. <laughs> this is really political in that sense. So tracing the developments of the ideas around Min, the people, I shall examine the imaginary space of resistance of the multitude as revived by Michael Hart and Antonio Legrit and its usefulness and limitation in the mobilization of people's movements um, in Asia today. So started with offering itself as a political ideal, um, the people's movement as a class rising up against capitalist exploitation or as the oppressed revolt against dictatorial rule has lost its aura in the 20th first century, that is the leftist uh, articulation for a long time. And the nature and the mobilization of people's movement have changed as such that the form and the value of its emergence have greatly departed from those of the last century. So because of the multiplicity of interests, goals and styles in the conduction of movements, there is a need to conceive the meaning of the people as they assemble for resistance, rather than the reiteration of Min Jung, the people, as largely a descriptive noun. I shall propose to move it forward to the use of a verb of Ju Jung, the assembling of people. By Ju, we shall capture the meaning of the mere execution of assembling and add to the conception of the people's activism and dynamism in the face of state authoritarianism. So I'm playing with two words and try to highlight what we can make out of that, um, the, the two terms, and, and, and infuse dynamism into our imagining of the people or the multitude. So um, these are some of the events that you know. Um, well, uh, most when people will move, relate to the new social movement or the new types uh, so, of social movement, the people's movement. They often recited uh, the events in Spain, in Greek, um, in uh, the Middle East, in uh, the Occupy in US or the UK cut. Um, so very seldom we refer to the Asian events, which is as much as uh, prominent, as prominent as the others. And uh, just a few glance, just a quick, a quick glance of the few events you can see there are big, very big, uh, very large rallies in Kuala Lumpur, which is uh, unimaginable for some of us. And uh, in Japan, of course, the anti-nuclear movements. And um, in, in China also, there are incidents 
from time to time that if we, we uh, care to look into the internet, then we will find incidences of them. But they were rarely reported. And then, of course, uh, last year, that was uh, the early part of the year, it was the Sunflower Student Movement of Taiwan. Despite the general political conservat conservatism for change in these societies, there were enough people who could bear with the autocratic governance no more and were courageous enough to stand up for themselves. Each of the rallies was particularly run by voluntary individuals rather than structured organizations. There were no heroic revolutionary subjects who are determined to change the order of the world with specific political programs or agenda or goals. Um, and there were no central organization, most of them, gathered as they see compelled to act and dispersed into the daily life once the protests were over. Their background were highly diverse and were often responded to calls to the calls together through the internet that being talked about uh, as individual incidents affected them. So these are some of the emerging uh, new features and this instigate a debate um, about uh, representation and absolute democracy. So despite the vast difference in the actual out of actions and the concrete issues leading to the explosion of mass discontent and extensive participation in the respective events, they all demonstrated some common features that are characterized as non-hierarchical, leaderless, spontaneous, and yet self-motivated. Placed in contrast to mobilization by parties or organizations of the civil society, these crowds were socially and ideologically heterogeneous and took pride in direct, non-partisan representation of the people. These protests gave rise ever since to theoretical and practice debates over the import of their ideological and political forms, with the seemingly forever state of the neoliberal order as well as the pre prevalence of the autocratic governance in Asia. Um, increased discontent with the existing political systems, including representational structures, grows. So as such, um, we see these new movements coming in. And um, so the idea uh, that Luck Lao want to bring back to the new social movements with the uh, conception of hegemony, that certain representation, certain power has to be delegated to uh, negotiators and mediators in order to lead the movement forward, is contrasted to Hart and Negri's argument of like the multitude, which is um, basically a, a, a uh, um, well, I would talk more about it, is, is a diverse uh, singularity, singularities that, that cannot be reduced. Uh, cannot be represented. So that's what they want to champion as the absolute democracy. So during the period from September 28th to December 15, 20, 2014, Hong Kong was confronted with one of its most acute political challenges in history and experienced a paradigmic change in the scale and forms of staging people's movements. The origin of the event is traced to the handover of Hong Kong from the British government to the People's Republic of China, the city's mother country in 1997. The handover marked the end of the territory's uh, colonial history since the signing of the Unequal Treaty. Um, but then, uh, as one uh, Hong Kong American scholar pointed out um, very much earlier, Ray Chow, who said, unlike the usual result of decolonization around the world, there was no return of sovereignty to the people of Hong Kong at the end of British colonial rule. Rather, the city was handed over by the British government to the Chinese government, passing through the hands of some one colonizer to another. So that created the problem. Here we have that after 10 years of delay, people were ex expected 2007 to be the date where universal suffrage will be introduced. But there was a delay because of the interpretation of the Standing Committee of the National People's Congress, uh, which set the year of electoral reform to 2017. And, um, but even further uh, disappointing was the decision made by the same body, SCNPC, uh, who imposed restriction 
uh, on August 31st, who imposed restriction on the nomination procedures by which the possibility of a non-pro-Beijing candidate for the chief executive election shall be ruled out. So the umbrella movement, as it has now came to be known to the world, staged by millions of people in Hong Kong over 79 days on the streets, was the result instigated by the decision. So during the period of streets occupations, the slogan of I want true universal suffrage dominated many major sites around the territory. And one of this is this symbolic mountain, the Lion Rock, which is, was always used as a symbol of people's, um, Hong Kong people's working hard, getting better lives, and then, uh, and then Hong Kong becoming prosperous. Um, so this, the hanging of a very huge banner, climbing up the rock and put it down, was a really a day of excitement for a lot of people in Hong Kong. Although it was taken down very soon, um, just in hours. So the expressions widespread and entirely self-initiated set clearly the strong demand of the people for democratic governance in Hong Kong. Like the other examples of popular protests, the people gathered for the umbrella movements came from very different ideological mindsets, ranging from the milder liberals to the anarchist leftists, or those who came to be known to be localists. These are very complex uh, <laughs> differentiation. Um, if you are interested, we can talk about it uh, during the break time. Uh, but because of the diversified positions, the three original campaigners who initiated Occupy Central were soon sidelined. Um, they, were, they were never the central leaders. I mean, they were not seen as central leader in the beginning because of some controversy. But then when the, when the, um, the, the occupation broke out, they were sidelined almost immediately because it was taken over by the student action. Uh, who, who, who wanted to do some more radical occupation of uh, a civic square in front of the government house. So um, this is one of the most distinguished, um, again, the feature of these new social movements is that without centralized forms of revolutionary dictatorship or command over them, uh, these people organized themselves in specific actions of resistance and um, it's a, so, so it's, it's a group now, um, a group of people who cannot be classed under any other distinct category except for their sheer facts of presence. So multitude is conceived to uh, by Hart's Negro to resurrect reform or really to reinvent the left by naming a form of political organizing and political project. It is an effort to give a name to what is already going on and grabs the existing social and political tendency, according to what they said. It is both an attempt to recognize the irreducible prolifer proliferation of singularities and to capture the potential of the common. So the dynamic is there, singularities and the common. In naming such tendency as a primary task uh, of political theory and a powerful tool for further development developing the emerging political form. Uh, but there were um, critiques, and not least of it coming from Lak Lao again, um, who sees actually the other need, the other end of the need, that is because of the diversity, because of the multiplicities of singularities, uh, he see, she sees a pressing need to engage with state power uh, representative institutions and national and global capital. So rather than the optimism placed on singularities and individual differences, the situation seems to urgently call for politics of broad alliance building. So that's, that's the difference there. My intervention is trying to, um, to play with the two terms, um, especially the second one, which is the zhuzhong, assembling of people. So um, it's a conception around the politics of space. So uh, after the end, I want to introduce this part that was probably less known to you. Uh, after the end of the Occupy movement by mid-December of last year, a few hundreds of protesters flooded back to Mong Kok, one of the earlier uh, occupied districts. It's also a main shopping area of Kowloon, which was occupied along with the central districts previously for many evenings. For over a month, sporadic 
crowds responded to calls issued through the social media and went back at around 9 o'clock in the evening to assemble around street corners and crossroads and chanting uh, Go Wu, literally meaning shopping in Putonghua. And the slogan carried multiple layers of subversion, including firstly, a radical of Putonghua speakers and the mainland shoppers who signified the dominance of political and economic powers in Hong Kong. And secondly, an act of retaliation over the rumors of Beijing's mobilization and manipulation of the anti-Occupy movements for which a mainland shopper signed uh, and then said, well, I signed, I didn't know what it was, but then uh, I came for shopping primarily, Ko Wu. So that became the drama and uh, being played up. So this sequel, I call it the sequel movements um, uh, to uh, uh, the Go Wu movement as a sequel to the umbrella movement actually highlighted an aspect of the multitude that has not been fully discussed. The original movement of Occupy Central was designed as a mass action of civil disobedience. The three initiators, uh, two professors and Christian ministers, together with about 100 volunteer supporters, planned every details of the anticipated events, including consultation meetings, discussion groups, and the training of self-protection skills, and the strict enforcement of the discipline of nonviolence uh, a year ahead. It started from 2013. Despite the nature of, the, of legal defilement in terms of occupying a central location of the city center and obstructing public transportation, the original movement leaders proceeded with application for public meetings with, when, the, when the days were more or less decided. So they want to plan it uh, accordingly, uh, which make it feasible and as safe as possible for everyone participating. And yet, to everyone's surprise, the Occupy movement went far beyond the plan. Since the day of uh, shooting 87 shells of tear gas and extensive use of strong spice sprays um, in a day, in half a day actually, the Occupy districts expanded into different communities largely on their own. And despite the highly disciplined manners of the street occupants, including their self-imposition of recycling and sanitary measures during the days, the Occupy movement becomes truly illegal, um, out of the plan. According to Hong Kong Public Order Ordinance Chapter 245, Section 7 and 8, the organization, the organization of public meetings must follow a procedure and seek permission where needed. Even though approval is sought, the police could still exercise control and apply special conditions for the specific events and meetings as deemed necessary. Um, in section of the same chapter, section 17A, any person who refuses or willfully neglects to obey any order given or issue, issued will be subject to penalty. Further, any public meeting, procession, or gathering of three or more persons who refuse or willfully neglect to obey an order given or issued shall become an unthor unauthorized assembly. The peaceful and orderly gatherings of the people in Admiralty, Causeway Bay, and Mong Kok were turned unauthorized assemblies immediately. These have indeed become the major charges made to the protesters after the conclusion of the occupied movement, and particularly for the Go Wu movement participants. So there were arrests being made um, over these last few months. So official adherence to the rule of law and ideal is a hallmark of liberal societies despite the differing conception of the ideal. In everyday use, the rule of law is often taken to mean simply law and order. That is, people should obey the law. While law and order might be an aspect of some versions of the rule of law, it is not really the heart of it. Rather, the rule of law is more to do with duties on governments rather than citizens. citizens. It obliges governments to rule only by way of laws. Um, so I, because of time, I can't uh, explain, explain this point, but I, I'm sure many of you know very well. Um, so, so actually, these uh, occupants, occupants of the streets are illegal and unauthorized uh, people who are assembling. And that's make it interesting. This is Mong Kok 
where the Gold War movement took place, and this is uh, actually uh, a very interesting place. Uh, so the Chinese characters of the multitude is supposed to mean a majority, uh, and, but but try to compose. But this this multitude or this people or zhong in the Chinese sense has also a negative connotation uh, because it's easily tied to the grassroots, meaning that it's also really frequently referred to the mass of mobs and gangsters. It's an unorganized group of people who threaten to cause social disorder. So the people as emerged in the recent people's movements were primarily not mobilized by political parties. No one knew how to control them. So they were largely free participatory citizens or simply residents of the place at the time of the rallies. Um, so they, they uh, okay, uh, no, uh, no time to explain further. So um, this, is the this is the particular association that I find inspiring about. The unusual gathering of a mass in the highly disciplined city life is indeed suspicious and assumed to turn eventually into a mob a situation that is actually forbidden by Hong Kong law. And uh, the spontaneous of gathering of more than three persons on the streets without official approval is subjected to police arrest already. So Ju Zhong, the assembling of people, is um, actually a name calling for rebellion. It's, it embodies a rebellious tone. It is in a way lawless by nature and it disputes the rule and order set up by the law enforcement authorities. It threatens the very existence of the governing order, be it colonial in the British time or post-colonial in the SAR time, the Hong Kong time. So for such an opening gathering of the people without questioning who they are, for what they come and where they come from, and simple staging of an assembly regardless of class or education background, ideological positions or political affiliation, the Zhong or the multitude emerged in the demonstration at the assembly ground made the most powerful collective statements of no to, count to the dominant power. In other words, it is the assemblages or the gathering itself matters, not the existence of a guiding ideology or leader in charge. So the conversion of a descriptive noun of Min Zhong to a verb of Ju Zhong, the first one, people, multitude, the second one, assembling of people, could highlight the action that goes with the people. So by Ju, the assembling, we may add to the conception an active and dynamic image of the people. Actually, I want to also uh, uh, explain to you how utopian the assembly has been. I mean, there were recycling bins, uh, lines of sanitary teams, lots of uh, snacks provided, water provided, uh, sun shields provided. And then uh, there is even a study room. Have you heard about that? Um, it's uh, assembled by some construction workers with some used wood, uh, used pieces of wood to, into tables uh, for children, um, not young children, but secondary students, uh, university students to, to do their study while they assemble. To return to the notion of a resistant subject, the complication of the multitude as the unlawful assemblage of the mob Zhong seems to be a much better portrayal of the unstructured protesters and dissidents on the ground in different Asian societies since they no longer belong to any one social and political classifications. Civil disobedience demonstrated by the street occupants is transferred into the gesture of refusal, the refusal to move on when told to do so by the authorities. The hold that power has over us is ultimately fragile. Uh, to say that, um, uh, they, they have claimed, reclaimed their own power to themselves. The politics of occup occupation is about turning the backs upon power and looking only to one another as an enactment of release from voluntary servitude. I will end with this um, statement of one of the core um, protesters group uh, called Siu Ga Jun. And he said, all that I've got were delivered to me by Hong Kong. What could I lose? So that's how he began to participate into the movement. And it's the freedom, I said, it's the freedom gained by uh, foregoing a possession of materials and over narrow understanding of freedom under the law. Thank you.